Hi guys, it's Moz here. I've just had one of the best days out for a very long time. I was invited by Dale and the Airfix team to the factory in New Haven where they are manufacturing this kit. What a day. Firstly, I just want to say thank you to Dale, to the whole of the Airfix crew, to Mark Thompson, who's the managing director of Plastec, who owns the factory where this is being manufactured, for a fantastic day. It was so insightful. Um, the day started off with a talk by Luke, the researcher, and Chris, the designer, um, about this tooling and the reasons why they went for this. Then we had lunch with some lovely Marks and Spencer sandwiches. Thanks, Dale. And then we went on a factory tour with Mark Thompson, and it was a delight. There's so much going on in this video. I filmed as much as I could of the actual factory tour, right the way from the history of Plastec, the fact that they build quick builds. So you will... So you will see a lot of these kits in the video, I presume, you know, as we're walking around, you'll see them boxing up those kits. And uh, as you know, I've done the Jeep this week, so it's uh, it was quite nice to, uh, to see where the quick builds are manufactured and then to go on and see this being, you know, made and uh, the whole premise behind it, the problems they've had, how... When it comes to quality control, I don't think there's an Airfix kit out there that has as much quality control. I'm just saying, okay? Um, even down to when they find sync marks and they adjust the tooling to try and make to, to, to make sure there's no sync marks when you get your kit. I just want to point out that the audio may vary in quality throughout this tour. Unfortunately, it's a very loud building, so I've tried to enhance the voice the best I can. And also, they had radios playing, so, so I don't get a copyright strike. I have actually tried to dull out the background noise because of that as well. Also, if you're not a subscriber, please feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when I release a new video, if you're enjoying my content. Anyways, we'll start off with meeting up with Mark and the history of Plastec and the relationship. And we'll go through and see how they manufactured this kit. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm public knowledge. There we are. Yeah. Yeah. So, I saw him on the telly. That's it. So, <laughs> let's just give you a little bit of history about Plastec. So Plastec was formed in 1983, primarily as a tool maker. So it was an injection mould tool maker before it did any injection moulding. So Plastec has the ability to work with the customer from an initial concept so you can come in here with an idea. So say for argument's sake, you wanted to make your own model outside of Airfix. You know, we could find hey. it, develop it, produce it, tool it, mould it, and deliver it. So yeah. the whole idea is to, is to offer the complete supply chain under one roof. So from tooling through to a finished end product, we can do the whole lot. Well, you make tooling here as well, do we you? We make tooling here as well. Yeah, we okay. make tooling offshore in China as well. Obviously, yeah. tooling is very expensive as, you, as you're wearing in the UK. Tooling is usually the bit that kills all models, you know, and mm. decides whether it's going to move forward or not. It's not the actual production. Production costs are relatively low, but obviously tooling is where the investment is. But we've tried to, um, on this particular project, work with local suppliers. So, so the leaflets are printed uh, in the local town, in the local town Seaford, just down the road. The boxes are produced um, the furthest away, Portsmouth, and then we've got another guy that produces the base boxes in Upjoy. So within that sort of 50, 60 mile radius, everything is produced around us, and we are producing and making a whole product. So let's have a let's have a wander through next door. So So in this facility we have the we have the ability to design and manufacture tooling, maintain tooling and modify tooling. So the tooling when it arrives with us from China comes in crated. We'll uncrate it, we'll open it, we'll degrease it because it's all grease for shipping. We don't want any corrosion in transit. We'll then take those tools, strip them as we are with this tool here, inspect them, test the water. Because obviously we want to make sure it's got a water flow through the tool. Water is key to our process and key to the processing of all the product. You know, it's like an engine. We don't want it too hot, we don't want it too cold. We want it as a stable, consistent processing temperature. The material requires that because if we try and inject hot plastic into a cold mould, it will affect the flow rate and affect the field. So, moulding is moulding is a set of flawed parameters that are we try and design around what should work, and obviously everything we produce is a one-off. So, as with all this tooling, we're not producing anything you know that's been produced before. It's unique in its configuration, 
yes, there's been Spitfire yeah. cooling before, but not laid out the same. So mm. lots of tests, lots of development. So even before we actually go to patent steel, we run a computer fluid dynamics program called Moleflow just to see do are the parts compatible? And the screw frame is, is more important than the part because it's how it balances the fill, yeah. how we get packed parts, how we get parts that are filling correct. And it's certainly where we, we're moving into thinner wall sections like the wings now, where we're trying to get them more authentic to scale. The screw is critical for delivering the right amount of material to the right place and getting them to the right path. So, tooling production, guys, and obviously all modern CNC equipment, we've got four CNCs. So very, very little programming online, very much programming offline. So we'll take the CAD information that the guys have produced and we'll use that to create machining path for a CAM, the computer aided machining. <laughs> right, this is this is this is building one, moulding one. So, so we've got three buildings, moulding one, tooling number two, number three unit production and warehousing. So this is our key moulding manufacturer facility. So you'll see various moulds dotted around. Every time you see a mould with a yellow ATML number, that's an Airfix mould. Yeah. So that's an Airfix product, that's an Airfix product. And you'll relate the, the relate the part number, on the, the mould number relates to the part numbers. So we can identify what's in there. So there we are. That's a quick build McLaren mould. This tool yeah. is quite old now, it's about eight, nine years old since we produced them, since we produced the McLaren. The moulds are adaptable to go into a range of moulding machines. So our moulding machines start at 80 tonne, clamp force down the far end, right the way up to 380 tonne. So the one we're going to look at today is a 380 tonne, which is currently moulding uh, Airfix, uh, Airfix Spitfire components. So this is a new machine, it's a microprocessor control machine. So we can drop the machine in, the machine is adaptable, we have to tell it what mould we're putting in, what size of mould, it's all, we calibrate everything to suit the job that we're running at the time. So we can run various materials uh, as well. Sorry. Play. Play. Yeah. You get copyrighted for that. <laughs> yeah. You that one, Yeah. So, Within our moulding scope, we're able to take a various range of sizes of tools. So obviously, the bigger the mould, as you can see, the bigger the parts normally. And what's happening on most modern kits now is you're not getting one tool frame on a sprue. Although we have with the fuselage there, so, so we're seeing up to four sprues, four separate sprues, four tool frames yeah. on one tool. So that keeps the cooling costs down to a certain certain degree, but it makes it takes complexity up because mm -hmm. you've got a lot more to control yeah. on, on tool frame. So yeah. in this 380 ton here. There's that new bag cap they're doing, isn't it? <laughs> we're moulding we're two frames, either frames L and Brittany for either J and DJ. D and J. 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 D the shot that's come out and we inspect against that. So what we're trying to do here is, is use a visual is a visual inspection to make sure are all the components present? Is there anything obvious that's short or missing from that tool frame? I'll let you know guys, let you use that. So the next one out give me a complete frame. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so we'll check that, we'll inspect that. So what what happens is you get to learn the jobs. You get to know what are the problem areas, what's likely to be the issue that we that we see coming out. So the moulding machine is basically in two halves. This half is what we call the clamp side. So this is it's basically opens and closes and spits the bit out. This end is the bit that makes it hot and squirts it. Ah, so okay. we'll take a raw material granule, um, which is uncoloured. We'll add a pigment to it that's, that's compatible with the material. That's most important. Because obviously, sometimes you get what's called a universal polymer, universal mass match, that won't always be 100% correct for the material it's going into. Like poly base. So if you put a poly base pig on it, yes, you'll get a moulding out of it, thank you. But what you'll find is it doesn't, it, it won't glue as well, it won't behave as well. So that is a complete tool frame as moulded. Wow. You'll notice we have a central oh, spar warm? sprue. There we are, feel it. It's very slightly warm. Yeah, it's you'll feel it the thick section. If you feel the thick section, oh, yeah. that holds yeah. the heat more. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. That was at 235 degrees less than 60 seconds ago. And then just cools, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's cool. So the mould is, is the mold has a water system to maintain it at a constant temperature. So we're not trying to keep it too hot, we're not mm. trying to keep it too cold. So we have a fixed half and a moving half. One half of the mould is retained on the on the fixed half platen. This is where the injection point is. So we have the, the feed system. The sprue, that's where it feeds into, then drops into a runner. And the runner is basically a road system. So it's like a series of blocks that you'll see here. So this is a road network. And the road network here is purely to distribute the plastic into the correct positions of the mould, fill it. So it's important that when we're filling it, a part that's very fragile like that is filling at the same rate as a part of the same size. So that mass might be a thousand times greater than that part there. Mm. So we've balanced the, road, the runner system, the feed system, so at the same point that is filling, this should be filling. You don't want to fill that one too much because you'll overpack it mm. before you fill that. Key to this as well is the air evacuation. There's 380 tonnes of plant source holding this closed. While we're putting plastic in, we're getting air out the mould. If we get an air restriction, we'll either get a burn mark, yeah, or we can get an air bubble, or we can get a short moulding if the air's meeting resistance. It's hydraulics, it's fluid dynamics. So this is coming in and it's displacing air to allow it to fill. But at the same point, we don't want the material to escape from any area that we don't want it to. So the areas which we call shut off, it's, it's basically the wall of steel around the part to maintain the integrity of that definition, that component. Obviously, yes, some flash is, uh, you know, is noticeable, but you, you don't want new tools ideally. If they're shut off correctly, any wisps, any edges, any, any dodgy areas. So once we've moulded it like that, we very simply break it off as a, as a frame. The frame will then go for inspection. That part is screw. The policy is zero landfill. So we'll take that, we will regrind that, and we'll either repurpose this at a lower dose into, a, into another component, or we'll take that and we'll add it into another moulding and another product. It's the styrene, it's the styrene. So we can add that to ABS at a very low, typically 10% mix rates or something like that. However, that probably be more forgiving in something like the wing or the fuselage than on parts that are highly, highly detailed. So, problem areas on this particular sprue are like the pipe work, where you've got very, very small parts, very, very small components. So typically, filling that will be straightforward and easy, and it's, it's easy to see if that's a full shot or not. Whereas on there, it's very, very hard to see if you've got everything, has that stuck in. And what we're relying on here, this, as I always say, this is not a... This is not a, a packing job. It's not about taking bits out and putting it in a box. It's about taking it out of the tool, inspecting it to make sure it conforms to the standard, to make sure that there are no defective molding uh, parts in there, any short shots. What you can't do with molding is take anything for granted. You can have a hundred that will be perfect, and then you'll have one that you'll find all of a sudden has developed a problem. What's quite common on new tooling like this is it, is it hobs in. So when you've got the shut off, you've got fresh steel on fresh steel, you can start to create a little burr. And the burr that comes over, it might only be a few microns, but it's just enough to start grabbing at the moulding and start holding it with it within the press. So what we're doing, typically doing is come back in, diamond file, very, very fine stones, and just break those edges off, just take that off. Not enough for it to flash, mm. but you say, this here, this here we've seen problems with this, shearing and snapping. Such a thin section, obviously, in scale, and obviously the force, you're pushing that out the mould with yeah. the force. So, mm. so, obviously, we've got lock over, we've got we've had injection, we've now got mould cooling. So, the toggle will release in the back here, you'll see that move first, and that will release the lock pressure, and then it will pull open. You'll hear it come open, then you'll see ejection, the ejector pins will come forward, push it forward. But because of the amount of surface area that's holding it, we will still pull that sprue off of the pins. Okay. We'll then shut the door, close it, safety bar, there's a safety bar, all the machines are safety controlled so you can't, can't close it with your arm in there. Mm. And then what we'll do, we'll go through the inspection process. So it's warm there, thicker mm. section it'd be warmer down the bottom. Yeah. And also, if I snap it there, it's, it's, more, it's softer yeah. there because of it's retaining the heat. You see, when you, yeah. when you bend it like that and snap it, what's happening there, that is the raw polymer. You've stressed it, so what you've done there is you've stressed out the master match content. If you look at that, you'll see that there'll be hundreds and hundreds of little grey dots, but because it's greater in its stress, so there we are, hopefully I'm ready, so bring them off, don't break them. But also, we're, look, we're looking all the time, is it a straight screw, is it a bent screw, is it any snaps? And again, these here, 
these are here for, to help for the ejection. So in other words, where we can't put a pin mark on something, we can't get a pin. These are also overspills. Yeah. So areas where it wants to vent or gas, we can then use these yeah, to yeah, flow yeah. fresh yeah. material into. Yeah. Sorry, Julie, I'll make a mess. It's all right. So, where's the... Where so what we'll do is we will keep continuously monitoring and signing off what's going on. So we have a historical record there of production over what happened on what day. So if we do get a problem, we've always got a reference to come back and say, well, no, hang on a minute, yeah. it's a fresh problem. Yeah. We haven't sent stuff out last week that's got this problem because we can see that was complete, that was okay. So those parts will be reused and go back into product, but at the moment on this batch run, we're monitoring right the way through. Mm -hmm. This is a double inspection job, so although, yes, taking it out of the machines are one person operation, to get the mm -hmm. correct amount of inspection, we need two people on it, yeah. and we bag it. The material will, it's electrostatic, it will draw out the, any dirt, any imperfections. If you see kit sometimes, like an old kit you'll get out sometimes, and you'll see it's got brown or like a wash mark all over it, that's because it's drawn down the dust out there. So we will bag and seal it as quick as we can, straight away. Mm. And again, no contaminants, there's a silicon release agent there. So we can have a silicon release agent maybe to get this all up and running, but you can't run it in production because any silicon that gets into that material means you won't be able to paint it. Right. And then, you know, again, some offshore products you will see that they're running at all where they yeah. spray continue straight mulberries. They're getting it running, but they've not thought about that you've got to paint it. That's right. Yeah. So you've got to bath it, scrub it, sand it down yeah. to remove, you know, soak it, clean it thoroughly before you can paint it. What we're trying to run here is dry product. It's product that's in the in the correct material mm. and dry. So we will, in theory then we won't have to wash this before we paint it. In theory. In theory, yeah. yeah. In, in theory, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, still obviously still wash it to yeah. you know, still clean it. But in theory it's got no mm. silicon mm. in it. There's nothing in that that should have an adverse effect, that is pure styrene. Yeah. So, I, th I think um, one of the issues we've had over the years for more manufacturers, not just Airfix, is QC. Yeah. But it just seems, you know, that some of it you'll pick it up from the floor, put it in a bag, and away you go, yeah. you know. But here it's just seems a bit. Oh, no, I'm just saying that, you no, know. But, but we, yeah. we, 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 I've seen kits that I've bought which have got plier marks. <laughs> yeah. So they're running that off, and then they're in the tool with a pair of pliers, pulling the bit out that's got stuck, drop it in the bag, seal it. Yeah. No. What comes off there must run clean yeah. and must run through. And it's, and it's, 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 yes, it is more work, it is more time consuming. And it's, what you'll see here is, yes, these tools are, are with us for a period of time before yeah. we're ready to go to production. Because yeah. it's development, you know, you don't, you know, McLaren just don't build a racing car and expect to go out and do laps. You go testing and we will do yeah. testing. We will look at what's working, what's not working. I don't think you guys want to come and I'll stop it next yeah. process. I'll open Sorry, it up. Sorry, yeah, to watch you open it up and then we can take a video clip. Yeah. Is so, that right? Yeah. So, Sorry, mate. Yeah, Can it's I just right. Cheers. Right. Thank you. It's a hard life in a concept. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's for keeps. So it's about 45 seconds between shut and open, is it? Yeah, what's it? It's 50 seconds, I think. Probably 45, 50 seconds. So, so mould will open. There we are. Yeah. Part will eject. We'll then open the door. We will then go in and we yeah. will. The part comes off. We don't pull it off or yeah. force it against anyway. But it doesn't want to go. There's the tool in its raw state with the ejector pin fallen. Yeah. So that mould, what mould yeah. he likes, he likes consistency. Yeah. So I won't stop it for too no, long. No, that's fine, it. yeah, get yeah. that. But uh, so yeah. then what we do there, we shut the door, we make sure the mould is in a single cycle, yeah. push the blue button, pins come back, mould comes in. Next stage is lockover. Toggle goes on, clamp force. 380 tons of clamp force. We then get injection. You hear it? Yeah. That's the plastic going in. The crack is purely mechanical movement as that plastic's forced its way in there. It's now screwed back and picking up the next dose. This mach machine is servo controlled. So the motor will only be on using energy when it's doing something in the operation. So it's, it's a stop, stop start technology for a car. So the machine has now turned itself off. Mm -hmm. It's now in cooling. It will now start itself back up. Open up again. So typically, I mean, this machine of this calibre will be saving 40% electricity of the machine, say, a previous generation ago. So again, this is a brand new machine. This is, this is this is this is new two weeks ago, wow. and we're we're continually updating. This is machine. a brand new machine. Brand new. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So wow. Okay. So yeah. what, what we set on the machine, what we ask it to do, we know we're getting its parameters. Yeah. Very very. Accurate. And here I stood up to the plate. I pressed the button. 
got the machine working and then I was able to take the molding out of the tool. So there will be a kit somewhere with four sprues that was made by me. <laughs> <laughs> right, press the button. This one here. That's it. You'll see the pins go back. Mole closing locks over. Process starts again. Wow. Um, uh, uh, Julie, how many are we doing a day at the moment? What's the current output on this? It's about six hundred. Yeah, five six hundred a day at the moment. Yeah. What we try here, we're running a twenty-four hour shift, so typically, you know. It's, it's, a, it's very, very simple. If it's 30 seconds, it's 120 now. If it's 60 seconds, it's 60 now. So you just, you just multiply up. So like 45 seconds, what is it, 90 yeah. odd an hour, isn't it? Yeah. So you're running 90 parts an hour. Yeah. And as long as you can open and close that, as long as you keep the plastic going in, yeah, 10 hours is 900. Yeah. But again, what we, what we are doing at the moment to try and hit the delivery performance targets mm. is rather than put that in and run that for a, a batch of 10,000, we put it in, run 1,000, pull it, put the next one in, run another test. So the idea is build up the stock so they continue flowing out 1,000 to 1,500 units per week. I know the market obviously finds that, oh, well, you know, parts are here, but you know, it's not like saying, it's not open the doors, 10,000 has come mm. out. And I think it, what, what hopefully you'll get across to your readers and your viewers is that it is a labour intensive process, that it is a slow process. Up the corner. Pull the corner, just feel it. Come off. Wow, look at that. There we are. Whoa, thank you very much. Brilliant. Get these plates in. I know, yeah. excellent. So, so all these cranes, yeah, so you put... Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's about a tonne of weight in there. Wow. So we're lifting... Wow. That, that's what, in moulding terms, that's relatively small. Yeah. Five tonnes as big as we go next door. Wow. But you lift it in. So what you do is you lift it in, you drop it in, yeah. you'll fix it to the fixed half platform first, you'll clamp it in. Effectively, it's like changing an engine in the car. Yeah. The, this, this machine doesn't know what it's doing. What we do is we, t we, we fit the engine in, the mould, yeah. and we program it to a set of parameters. Yeah. And then what we may find is we may find we'll have a set of processing conditions. So we create a window, that's our processing window. So within that window, we know it works. So we've, we've told the machine, if you're at 50 seconds, and it hasn't, you've not filled it up, your alarm out. The machine will alarm and say, hang on guys, something's happening here. Come and have a look. Yeah. But it's, it's a very consistent process. And because this is a brand new piece of kit, what we're asking to do, there's no wear. So it's not like, not, you know, molding machines are like cars. So if you buy a car with 150 brake, in 10 years it's only 140 brake. Yeah. Whereas this is giving us exactly what we want. So by having this sort of machinery, it allows us to very closely, what we ask of it, we know we're getting. That's so a very consistent process. Let's have a wander along and look at the... Uh, wow. Much smaller tools, it's a smaller machine. Oh. So, wow, that's not bad, boy. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, that's the way. So this is the tooling for the fuselage of the Spitfire 124 scale. You can see there, um, the way the um, convex that side and then concave that side. You can just see the, the, the detail there of the rivets as well. It's pretty smart. So as, as with all kits, at the, at the, begin, at the beginning, they are very technically challenging. You, yeah. you, there's a lot of work. So yeah. you produce a new mould, it's not just a case of drop it in the machine, turn yeah. it on, walk yeah. away. There is always development, there's tweaking, mm. there's tuning of gates, the runner system. Very rarely do we have to touch the part, yeah. but we are continually looking at what's the fill rate. You know, like, like, yeah. like the sink marks there. So there was a sink mark there that was very difficult to get rid of, and we've, we've, we've been making tiny little tweaks, not to yeah. the moulding, but to the fill system, to try and improve it. Yeah. So, and it's it, it's, it's, con it's continuously monitoring. So overall, it's, yeah, it, it takes a few weeks of getting it in mm. and running it. Yeah. And, you know, just because... Usually you, you kind of like, if it's like got a bit of a, a tight spot, you would then grind that a little bit out to make it go Typically in. Typically hand work it, so we're, we're being yeah. with very fine, di you know, diamond stones. Yeah. Taking the edge off. Get, get it to where it needs to be. And, and, but mm. once you've done that, it's not just yeah. a question of, you know, leave it, walk away. 
continually monitored. So, primary one my guy, the team's here. The team is here for quality first. Yeah. Boxing it is a subsequent, you know, you know, part of the process to the quality. Mm. Quality, quality, quality. Excellent. You know, there's no point in putting bits in a box that ain't any good. Mm. Excellent. And it's it, that's that's what we are about. Brilliant. Well, it's great to see. You know, so I remember when I saw you come in, I thought I've seen him on the telly already because he must <laughs> do the quick builds. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. you know, we're now seeing it being made here. But as hopefully, because I still feel that, you know, the frustration we've had is that kits are being not released because the boat hasn't come to Dover; it's gone to Rotterdam. I know. So we're now yeah. we've got a manufacturer in here. We're, there's not that time difference. No, and, you know. And, and we can, you know, if from a molding point of view, if we've got yeah. consumer product boxes, deck mm. and things, we can turn this off and turn this on. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, 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 you know, if we've got the mold, we can pick it up and drop it in the machine. Yeah. Usually within a week to ten days of an order, yeah. we're able to process that order and yeah. produce so it's a consumer stock. Mm. I love dearly, you know, part part of the reason, you know, we are working for Hornby Airfix yeah. is I love the brand. I grew yeah. up with the, I grew up with the brand. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I was saying to someone earlier, I knocked on Mike Waters' door, a director at the time, yeah. and said, I want to be doing this work. And yeah. I, I, I bandaged him for months, and he said, come in, sit down, you've got 10 minutes. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I had the story, yeah. yeah and he said, yeah. And he said if, if, if you're not a fit for us, leave me alone. Yeah. And very, very quickly, I was talking to the, the then time uh, MD, and we established quick build, and then we put, subsequently followed that in with glue kits. You know, I'd love to think we could produce it all here. We, we have the capability, is whether it's commercially viable. Yeah. And obviously, at, at this price point, it's viable. At lower price points, mm. less viable. Yeah. But this is a serious, you know, this is a premium product. This is for a serious modeler. Yeah. This is not an impulse buy. This is a planned buy. This yeah. is, you're buying this because you want this. Mm. You, you have an expectation on quality. You have an expectation on detail. Yeah. And yeah. this is what we were saying. It's not just like a cheap kit. It's a collector's item. It's That's something right. that you're going to yeah. spend hours, days, even weeks or months building. So you you do want. Yeah. There is almost going to be a reverence to it when you build it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and it's it's a, his, it's, it's a historic model as well. And you know, and the thought of the Spitfire being manufactured anywhere but here. Yeah, <laughs> in, exactly. In, in yeah. Way, yeah. I'm doing 22,000 as well. That would yeah. be the golden number, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah, you know, that's, yeah. that's it. How far have you done so far? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and obviously, you know, not today, but we do get the flyovers from the Spitfires. As yeah. Well. And yeah, it's an iconic aircraft, and, and it deserves to be given, you know, the attention to detail that it's given. Yeah. And obviously, that's I'm just hoping that obviously the people that will buy it, you know, your viewers, yeah. you, know, the, your, you know, your readers will appreciate the level of work that's gone into getting oh, the product this yeah. level. No, it's you know, but then again, me personally, it's got an airfit sticker on it. I buy it anyway, don't know, Matt. <laughs> you can see my pre order on it on the, in January. Got a I am, I am, yeah, yeah. It's an illness, it is an illness, yeah. It is an illness, yeah, it is brilliant. Um, different Not really. Inspection again, and you know, the little details like the airfix round all Samson's at the bottom of the box that was a suggestion from our packaging supplier. Right. He's got a, he's got he's got a new piece of kit that says I can, I've got this machine there that can cut and fold and do all this. Yeah. I can put the airfix logo in the box. So you embossed it, there's that part of it, it, yeah, because that, that was a itself. lovely touch. That yeah. was, you know, <laughs> and it's just, it's just a little bit of attention. Just pass, excuse me, sorry guys. Sorry, Gary's in the way. <laughs> You've had your 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. So just to have that in the bottom of the box. Yeah. Just so when you're building it, you know, just yeah. that little bit of attention to detail. It's, it's an attention Keats. to detail product. Yeah. Or because you thought, oh, I've got a new machine, we'll try we'll it. Try and that. then yeah, and we'll... it, it does, uh, yeah, we and you charge it 5p extra for the box. <laughs> I can see all that, mate. I, I, guarantee with... that, I guarantee that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but it's from a, Dale, 5p. But, yeah. for, but from a commercial point of view, yeah, yeah it's stunning, it, yeah. It's, it's a free detail. Yes, yeah. it was a, you know, a little bit more in the tooling, but it's just nice. It's just showing that it's not just a box. Yeah. Yeah. This box is actually based upon the Bentley 112 box. <laughs> yeah. That's, it that's is. the actual yeah. size of the box. Because that was yeah. what we that was the that was the market intention mm. to use that size that size of box. And yeah. because we, we you know we, we did the test shots into the Bentley box, yeah. this was tooled from it. Right. Again, you know, it's the, it's 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 the it's the what's what's wrong, what's right, you know. Yeah. So there's the box. Yeah. As you'll notice when you turn it that way, everything's right. When you turn it that way, everything's yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's it's a, that's, a, that's an airfix straight. That is, yeah. yeah. And again, all yeah. these things, all of these things matter. How the box folds up, you know, even down to how when the box is sitting right, so that you don't damage the edge of the box. The, the very slight overlap, you know. So even oh. that, even that was pre-sorted out. 
yeah the, so when it folds down yeah. yeah so all these little things that we can yeah this box has been through two or three iterations the shipper carton the shipper carton as you probably will know yeah even that's been thought out so we've got a, we've got a shipper carton box now that fits the box exactly so each one of these is now boxed individually so we're not shipping so so from a customer point of view when it's actually packed it's mm. packed into a shipper carton so the risk of the box getting damaged scratched yeah. creased is reduced because it's already in shipper carton yeah and again environmental we're now on the paper tape yeah, yeah. Saw rather that. than the plastic yeah. and you probably yeah. notice we've got brown paper in some of the devices yeah, um, yeah. to try and reduce mm. try and reduce the amount of plastic that we're using yeah. in packaging it's good that yeah plastics you know. It was a box within a box within a box. That's what got me because yeah. you, you, you at the moment you've having to have the poster as well. Yeah. So you must have loads of posters somewhere. We well, not here. They're coming out separate. They're, they, they're being dispatched directly. Oh, are they now? Yeah. Because mine came with the poster in with it, and I was it. like, "Whoa, look at this!" Look like that, it was yeah. really good. Yeah. So but, um, yeah, the, obviously yeah, the, the color scheming, mm. um, uh, prints, the instruction leaflets again, all done, all done locally. Yeah. The guy there master printer the care yeah. and detail that he's putting the color matching on that mm. you know getting the getting the crispness of that all counts for delivering a quality product yeah and it's yes okay yes and you could make an instruction leaflet for five pence ten pence less mm. but at the level the quality of grade of paper again yeah. it's sustainable paper it's recycled it's, it's made mm. from recycled material you know potentially on the outside side of the carton you could you know it's, we could mm. offer potentially a carbon neutral offset yeah. We're not able to do it across the whole product range, but that is something that's, yeah. that's possible. Just and plant a couple of trees, yeah. Yeah, you know? that's, that's it. So there's. Yeah. The and now, is there. it right that you've got um, recycle tabs on these because they can be recycled, can't they? The, this spruce can, yeah, this, yeah. This spruce can be recycled. Yeah. There's a there recycle is, tab on the thing, yeah, isn't there? Like yeah. These could go. These can go straight. Obviously, we all know. Yeah. We could all cut the sprues up and use them for stirring paint and making aerials and things like that. But this sprue here is is, is exactly the same uh, material and could be put into the into the rubbish bin as recycled. And again, it's a uh, it's got the correct logo on it. Correct logo on it. Yeah. Yeah. So it identifies what category it is. Yeah. On there. So. Mm. Yeah. Just again, putting back. Just all these, all these little bits. How many places in the UK that can recycle like that? Because when I did a check, high impact polystyrene, it's, it's not. It's it's negligible. There's a there's a, yeah. com there's a company we're talking to at the moment that's got a got it's got a new unique process. It's not market available at the moment, but they can chop a car up, and they can chop a car up, and they can take the metal out, and they can take the aluminium out. They can even now take the plastic out and and segregate the plastic at a molecular level by a float process. Now. The other thing that's coming for kits, and this is not, this hasn't been done on this one, is we can now go to a monomer based, uh, all plastic use a monomer in them, we can now go to 100% uh, recycled monomer. So yes, it would increase the price of the plastic, but you can make it from recycled cooking oil. So, so potentially, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. potentially we're at the point where instead mm. of having, yes, this is an oil based material, we can actually have a kit that is 100% plant -based. plant based. But then would, yeah, but then you've got to think about, what about like the, the glues that are used, the paints that are added to it, would all, that be affected all, by... All, 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 these, all these have an effect. And again, yeah. you know, I, think, I think where plastics gets a bad press is, you know, it's how you take the view on it. My view is plastic is the most, one of the most sustainable materials that we've got. It's how it's managed, it's how it's used. Yeah. So this is, you know, if you're going to build this and build it properly, this is something to be kept for a number of years. Mm. Yes, yes, okay, you can recycle it, you can do other mm. things with it, but you know, it's not a plastic knife or fork. Yeah, you know, this is something that that means something. Mm. Um, and yeah, as with all plastics, if it's used correctly, if it's controlled mm. correctly, yeah. you know, if it's, I mean, Lego. Yeah. You look at Lego. You know, I've still got Lego that I had from yeah. the 1970s, and yeah. it's done me, it's done yeah. my son, it's back up in the loft. It'll probably hopefully do my grandson yeah. one day. So Unless you find it in your toe, like when that's you're it, yeah, that's foot, it. Like, it? Yeah, I've, got, I've, got, I've got the scar on my knee. Yeah, yeah, that one. So what we're trying to do is, yes, we have an ethical uh, responsibility. You know, we're eco yeah. registered, so we're registered mm. to say that you know it's non-slavery. You know, we, it's a controlled process. Say, target zero landfill. That's, yeah. that's what we're going for. Brilliant. You know, yeah. that. And yes, there's an environmental process, but there's a commercial side to it because plastic's very expensive now, and anything we put in the bin. Yeah. Yeah. Has a, yeah. Has a, has a knock-on effect commercially. So that's his paper, is it? Paper. That's his it? paper. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, yeah. it complies to Amazon, um, uh, the, yeah. the, the, yeah. the standard for dispatching and the recycling. Yeah. So yeah. no plastic there. The box is a little bit different. Unfortunately, we, we, we have to use clear tabs on the box. But again, very very small amount of material that's used. Yeah. But again, you know, these are things that we're continually looking at. You know, what is what's mm. practical, what's commercially viable, and obviously mm. what's the right thing to be doing. So again. 
all the leaflets we print in the barcoding we do here that's all done in house yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we've, we've got. That's excellent. It's, it's it's closing that loop. Anything I'm yeah. in that chain that, that, that mm. keeps us that keeps us uh, keeps us busy. But mm. say, in terms of actual production, you know, you can see the big. You know, there's, there's one in this machine over here. So this is a big machine that's got one of the largest fruits in it uh, that we're producing mm. at the moment. That's not running, so obviously it's noisy. So when you, when you guys are gone, we're going to turn it on tonight <laughs> yeah. and we'll run it overnight. Yeah. But so the bigger the tool, the bigger the machine. So if you're a day late with your with your kit, it's because yeah, of us. <laughs> Well then, yeah. 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 Um, it was brilliant, absolutely fantastic day. Really enjoyed myself. Met up with some really good content creators, you know, my good friends, Model Minutes and Plastic Alchemist. Also met up with a guy called World of Wayne. Really interesting character he was too. Great channel. Um, uh, Gary Stuff was there as well. We also had um, a lot of the magazines there, Tamiya Magazine, Airfix Magazine and um phoenix scale modeling which is a, a really good magazine to look hold uh, to get hold of too um also i've kind of signed myself up to march the 10th there's a 48 hour build-a-thon for the uh, models for heroes charity so keep an eye on that because uh, model associate model officer was there great youtube channel as well he was there uh, looking at this kit with us as well with the guys from um models for heroes so quite a packed day there's going to be another couple of videos about this as well um but yeah thank you so much for watching again folks if you'd like to become a channel member please this really does help the channel there's a, a join button below and prices start from 199 on the screen are the people who are members of this channel who are helping this channel as well and i appreciate their financial support with this uh work i'm doing um if you like the video click like if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe ring that bell click all and you'll be notified when i release a new video any questions any comments please just leave them down below because i will try my best to reply and if you have any specific questions that you need asking i can always go to fx and ask them for you as well that's it great time great videos and if you want to see the unboxing of this kit click here and if you want to see other videos in relation to my fx channel click here